Hello, this is Jess Allen, Community Manager with the Adele Ecosystem. Again, here with the honor of talking with our co-founder, Gabriel Dusil. Hello, Gabriel. Hello, Jess. Nice to talk to you again. Same here. All right. And today's topic is about entrepreneurs and blockchain visionaries who have been getting in touch with us, um, inquiring about the incubator aspect of Adele. And so I've been keeping some of those uh, questions and I wanted to be able to present those to you and get some answers. Sounds good. Okay. Hopefully I can help out. All right. If, if anyone can, you, uh, the chances are you're the man. All right. So, um, so in terms of an entrepreneur or a, a blockchain visionary that wants to enter the Adele ecosystem, do they have to actually bring their project as a formal project into the incubator to be a member? Yeah, well, basically in order to present a project, the entrepreneur has to be a member and the entrepreneur can uh, be a member either through our ICO process, which finished at the end of May, and that required uh, one Bitcoin in investment, which ended up being 33,000 Adelphoi. And if an entrepreneur wants to come after the ICO uh, fundraising uh, initiative, then they need two Bitcoins. We're going to establish the value of that uh, that amount uh, of two bitcoins in Adele Foy coins at uh, on uh, July 1st we're going to establish that amount and we're going to fix that amount for everybody so they'll know on July 1st how many Adele Foy they need in order to become a member so once you become a member then you can present ideas in this community-based model and the reason why we're doing that is because we want this community be, to be exclusive and that's important because the business planning process is a sensitive uh, initiative. There's a lot of uh, confidential information, a lot of uh, uh, internal use of information is being created and shared amongst the, the members. There's uh, different disciplines that are involved in creating the business plan. And we don't want the public to be able to see that business planning process. We don't want people to copy our ideas. We want to protect the uh, the stakeholders and, and the members in terms of the investments they're going to be making in future projects. So it's really the exclusivity is basically to create this environment where we keep a vested interest in the secrecy of the projects that we're incubating. And I think one of the things that has made Adele different is its KYC, AML, CTF compliance. So any members that are coming in actually do have to declare who they are. So we're not just an anonymous pool sharing our ideas, not really sure who's on the opposite end listening. Everyone within this private community knows exactly who everyone is at some level. Is that correct? Well, I mean, there's, there's still the aspect of privacy that we're going to maintain in the community. So we don't necessarily divulge the identity of any of the members. They will, they will still have an alias. They can choose to create a profile in their account, uh, whether they want that profile to be visible or not. We need to know who those people are. We need to know who the members are for KYC, Know Your Customer, AML, Anti-Money Laundering, and CTF is the tricky one. That's the counter-terrorism financing uh, aspect to uh, to knowing the identity of these members and we're doing that really again to protect the community because we want to be uh, an ICO uh, and a blockchain incubator that basically uh, follows the the regulatory requirements and AML version 4 is basically coming out this year that's going to encompass the cryptocurrency community so we wanted to be the first in the world to be compliant in our initial coin offering so so this is important in order to create a framework and, and a foundation uh, from which we can build a very solid uh, brand and also help to legitimize the, the blockchain brand and uh, so we will know the identity of these individuals as part of our AML policy and when we get audited then we will show our compliance to to that 
uh, to that audit and to, to the regulatory compliance that it, that's part of the Isle of Man uh, framework that they put together. And, uh, and we will at the same time protect the privacy of our community if they choose to remain private in that respect. Wonderful. And how does that experience of going through all the compliance and that regulatory work that Adele had to do up front, how does that experience help an entrepreneur coming in? Well, ultimately, the, the, simple, the simple answer is that they don't have to worry about participating in a crypto community or a blockchain initiative that, that is under threat of being shut down in the future. Right? The, the, the more compliant we are, the more we work with the regulators to remain compliant, then we basically maintain uh, a strong integrity for what we're building as a blockchain incubator w versus other types of initial coin offerings that allow for anonymity and uh, don't follow regulatory compliance and find themselves shut down in six months and everybody loses their money. So that doesn't help anybody and invest in, in such platforms to, they, they may be happy that they're at anonymous investing in a platform, but then when they lose all their money, then, then what's the point, right? So we want to make sure that we create a legitimate platform that follows the, the regulatory uh, compliance uh, initiatives and that protects again, the, the stakeholders, it protects the members, it protects the Dell community uh, and the brand that we're trying to establish. Does an entrepreneur, a blockchain visionary that's bringing their idea to the incubator have to then also have a KYC, AML, CTF compliant uh, project of their own? Well, yeah, that's, that's actually an important point because we have a philosophy that we put together uh, in one of our white papers. You, you'll, you can take a look at that. The, the core aspect of the philosophy is legal, moral, and ethical projects. Uh, not only does the community have to follow legal, ethical, and moral uh, standards as part of our philosophy, and there's other aspects that we have in there, which is privacy, as I mentioned, but uh, we also want our projects to follow the same. And we also want to work with partners that are also compliant to their best uh, of their abilities. And often uh, the aspect of compliance is a best effort initiative. Uh, as the, the aspect of compliance is, uh, is a moving target. And that adds a lot of uh, that adds a lot of challenges for a blockchain incubator such as ourselves because we can be compliant today, find out that there's some regulatory changes that are happening in six months, then we have to change. But the more compliant we are at this stage, then we can be malleable in changes that they're making, so that we can uh, continue to to make those changes as they make changes. And we actually are going uh, the board members, the three of us. Michael Vavrick and uh, Jan Lamster, myself, we're going to the Isle of Man, talking to the government of uh, the Isle of Man uh, next week, and we're going to be talking uh, in an advisory council about the regulatory aspects that they want to implement to to attract uh, ICOs to their country, and also discuss some of the challenges that they face in 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 attracting ICO, ICOs to their country. So it's a uh, it's an open uh, discussion that we have with them. And we have a great relationship with Isle of Man government in order to facilitate these types of initiatives. Okay. And so when will every project that's incubated within Adele become an ICO? Well, the plan right now is that we are going to create a new token called the Adele Share. And the Adele Share, we're using the acronym ADS in contrast to ADL, which is the Adele Foy coin. And the, we're actually creating this strategy right now. With, and, and in fact, actually about four hours ago, I just had a meeting with the board members uh, to discuss this strategy in terms of how to formulate the investment uh, vehicle that we want to facilitate uh, the, the, the creation and the seed capital uh, for projects moving forward. So we're still in the process of, of doing that, but the ADS token, the Adele share uh, at the moment is going to be uh, a, uh, 
potentially like an ownership into projects. And the only way to get that ownership is to buy ADS using ADL. So members that uh, currently have ADL in their, yeah, in their wallets, in their NXT wallets, can in the future, once we create this in investment vehicle, then use those ADLs to trade, uh, to, to buy ADS uh, uh, tokens in, in projects. They, so at the moment they can use ADL to trade onto the exchanges and in the future that'll be an additional option and there's going to be other options to use ADL. There's going to be options to, to pay dividends and pay uh, rewards back to members. Uh, salaries uh, may potentially be used uh, to be paid in ADL. So we want to widen the uh, availability, the use of this currency, the ADL currency, in many different aspects in this uh, Adele ecosystem marketplace that we're going to be creating. Okay. So I, I don't think I heard you clearly there in terms of, or maybe I did, it sounds like the funding for the projects is going to be internal to the community and it's actually the internal community members that have bought into ADL will really have first opportunity to be stakeholders or shareholders in these projects that are incubated. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they. they the members will always be given favorable rates. They'll be given favorable terms. Uh, they'll be uh, given favorable opportunity to be employed um, in, in, let's say, a, a first right of refusal type aspect. So if we have a developer role, we'll ask within the community who's a developer that would like to work as a developer for that project. And then they would become part of that business plan and as an asset to that business plan. And that could be for lawyers and other types of uh, uh, disciplines that, that could be uh, employed amongst the members. So we definitely will be setting up a, a marketplace so that members have favorable rates in very diff various different aspects. And so we're, we're looking at various different options to really show that those that really started early with us uh, get great conditions into the future. And so it, that's actually a great benefit, it sounds like, to an entrepreneur, blockchain visionary who has this idea is when they bring their project to the incubator, not only are they getting mentorship and all these other things that we'll talk about, but they are actually have a talent pool and there'll be a system in place for helping them find talent to, that'll obviously be very interested in making sure their project is a success because whatever success of their project could then contributes to the overall ADL success. So it's like compounding successes. Absolutely. And, and so coming back to this whole idea of entrepreneurship. So uh, we see this formula coming together in a perfect storm in the sense that we have members that are creating projects from the ID incubation, we call that I2, and moving those projects into project planning, we call that P2, and then moving those into enterprise execution, so that's uh, E2. And this whole supply chain, we call that the idea to project supply chain, is really uh, attractive because not only are you investing, or the entrepreneur is investing their, their time and their passion and their investment uh, into these projects, they're creating something from, from infancy to adulthood, and they have uh, ownership into those projects and they also can be employed in those projects. So there's, there's a lot of benefits that we see in, in creating this supply chain aspect to business planning and idea incubation. Okay. How, so one of the questions um, I get often is how much, if a, if a, if a, a project gets incubated, how much does Adele, the ADL token or share, coin keep of the actual project itself, like the intellectual property or the equity stake in, in, the, new, in the new company? So the intellectual property will stay within, within the Dell and the ownership still has to be established uh, and solidified as part of our investment strategy. But the, at the moment, uh, what we've documented is that uh, Adele would keep 30% ownership of projects 
uh, when a entrepreneur presents a project to the community, they become what we call an innovator and they can choose how much ownership they would like of that project based on, on their innovation. So whatever percentage that is, let's say it's, it's X percent, then the remaining ownership, which is 70% minus X because 30% is going to Adele, is then uh, split amongst the, the community. And that is, all cho that is all chosen by the community through a voting process. So the, there's a democratic vote, uh, whether the community likes the business plan, whether they're happy with the innovators percentage that they're choosing, and through the wiki process that we're going to be doing in terms of creating this business plan, we'll have a good sense whether the community has a strong propensity to, to be happy with that percentage or not. And uh, by the time we go for a vote, we'll have a good idea what the community is happy with because the community is actually creating the business plan. Wouldn't it make sense that if, if the project was a good one, that the community would take no percent? Let's say Adele keeps 30 percent and the innovator keeps 70 percent because they bring a fairly seasoned project to the table. Would it ever make sense for us as community members just to make sure that got off the ground so we could have it as something under our umbrella? That's a really good question. I, we don't really know what... Uh, is going to happen because nobody's done this before. We're, we're, we're really the first to market to create this incubator for blockchain innovation in a community-based model. We're mar marrying venture capital with social media, so to speak. And it's going to be interesting what the community will be happy with. Maybe, maybe that scenario might play out. That's really actually a good question. And I'm actually intrigued personally to find out what is going to transpire through this business planning process and how the collaboration is going to work and uh, we, we actually see some really amazing aspects that have never been done before. We, wa we want to wiki the idea creation, uh, the idea incubation, uh, I2. We want to wiki the, the project uh, planning, the P2 uh, initiative. And we want to wiki the whole process in a multi-language uh, scenario. So we want to use, of course, the, Eng the English version as the master but we want the Chinese to be able to edit that document in Chinese using various translators that we would uh, API to. And they can, of course, uh, locally fix that, uh, those sentences as, as uh, for example, when I'm translating something from another language, it's not a great translation, but I can fix it up fairly easily, much better than, than asking uh, a translator, right? So uh, the idea is that like any Wikipedia or, or Wiki initiative, we can have potentially tabs at the top where we have a Chinese version of the, of the business plan, we have a, a, a Spanish version, we have a German version, we have an English version, and they've all been edited by local members uh, with that native speaking capability. Yeah, that's pretty, um, that's pretty awesome. It's really, I mean, blockchain allows for cross-border collaboration and Adele is uh, showing how to make that happen. So that's, that's cool, okay. Um, but, well, let me just uh, go back to that question real quick and say, when Adele keeps 30%, what, what does that 30% go towards? Well, we are basically using that 30% uh, to run the ecosystem. Uh, we, we're creating these modules, so we're developing the modules. We're going to have a project review committee, which are, is uh, members that are experts in finance, uh, venture capital, legal marketing and that will oversee the business plan uh, initiatives and the incubation initiatives so really we're creating an ecosystem that will continually develop uh, with features and and uh, modules we have six modules uh, planned and and basically uh, basically to fund that whole ecosystem uh, creation development and all the other staff that are used to run that uh, the ecosystem as, as a whole. Okay. Well, then I can tell you as someone who get the opportunity to vote, if a great project came along and it was like 30% to ADL and 70% to the guy who put it all together and is willing to bring in and sees value of being come part of the community. I mean, to me, that seems like it would be a win, but you know, that's the beautiful part about uh, voting is everyone gets to have their say. 
Well, this is the, this is the important part because uh, just, just like you mentioned, Jess, because we have a lot of emails coming to us. They've seen us on the website. They've seen the, uh, a successful ICO. Uh, they know that we're KYC compliant, that we're creating this legitimate platform. And they start to get confused that we're a venture capital and we're not. You know, we're not uh, going to review business plans from outside of the community and uh, send a million dollars to another country to fund a, a venture capital initiative. There, we ex need to explain the process to many of these companies that come to us asking us for money that this is a community-based model. Uh, there, uh, we, we build a, the business plans within the community. The community needs to vote on your project. They need to agree on the project uh, as a community. They, they have employment opportunities. So it is a very specialized model and it doesn't fit uh, with every entrepreneurial initiative and every startup initiative, but we have a lot of interest in people that want to join the community because they have great ideas, but they don't have the resources to realize their ideas. And that's the whole thing about of, of creating this community-based model because we're going to have people that with various different backgrounds, uh, legal and finance and so on. And not only that, they're going to have multicultural backgrounds. They're going to have regional backgrounds in, in South America and North America and Asia and Africa and so on that can say, look, I can take this project that we're working on together and I can bring it to my region and we could do some great things, but we need to do some, some changes to, in order for it to work in my region. And that expertise is going to be great. So, so that, that takes ideas from an entrepreneur that they may be even thinking about from a one country perspective or one continent perspective, and it just spreads it out into five, four more continents. Yeah, absolutely. Five, five continents, so four more continents, yeah. <laughs> Not known for our geography, Adele, but we could sure incubate the heck out of your project. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the Olympic uh, rings, and I, I know there's five of them, so those are the... <laughs> Okay, so, <laughs> all right, so let's see, and then um, could an entrepreneur uh, bring, uh, become a member and then have their own ICO and do their own project outside of Adele, or is there some kind of non-compete that they would sign? Yeah, all the members are going to sign a community code uh, in order, in terms of confidentiality, to keep the uh, the ideas within the community uh, in order to protect the uh, confidentiality of those ideas, protect the members. Uh, and we also will employ an InfoSec, uh, Info Security policy of public internal use, confidential and secret information. And uh, we also, the way we look at it is, is because we go, we're going to have so many resources in creating these business plans that even if somebody does try to take a project outside of the community, it's going to be like comparing bicycles to speed trains and we're the speed train. So even if somebody tries to take a project, we're going to be so fast to market. This is what we believe anyway. We're going to be so fast to market with the resources that we, we have and we're going to have such a, a, a cookie cutter method to building business plans that even if they try to take a project outside of the community, that for them to be able to duplicate the same resources that we have would be very difficult. Would they be able to take a completely unrelated project and just do one themselves outside the incubator or once they're part of the incubator, then, you know, their projects here or? Yeah, yeah, I mean, if, it's, if, it, if they don't present it to the community, then, then, then it's, yeah, it's their project for sure, oh. absolutely, yeah. Okay. And then, um, so, all right, that covered that question. That covered that one. So talk to me about, like you just said, um, this was another one, was the uh, access to, you know, resources and, and really the resources that we're talking about are the human resources, a lot of them, right? It's, it's you, you're certainly an expert at marketing and branding and a lot of other things. And I know uh, Michael is an expert in terms of um, finance, I believe. Um, and so it, when you talk about resources, is that you're talking about the human capital that we have as our community? Well, let me first start by saying that you are an excellent marketeer as well. 
right. so I'm, I'm learning as much from you as you're learning from me and, and probably I'm learning more from you. Uh, so let, 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 let's, let me say that first. Now, uh, in terms of resources, you're right. It, it, there's the human resource component and we're very conscious of the fact that not everybody's going to participate. There's, I, I call them readers and writers. There are people in any, any, in any forum that, that you have the active writers and you have the active readers of what everybody else is writing and they don't really need to write anything because what they're reading is, is basically what, they're, what they need to get out of that forum anyway. So we see the same thing happening. We're not really sure what the percentage is going to be. Maybe, maybe 20% are going to be writers and 80% are going to be readers. We're not really sure. Uh, but the other aspect that is even more uh, complex in what we're creating is that, that even though we're going to have maybe 20% that are going to be actual writing uh, contributors to the idea incubation and the project planning, there is still the visionary component, which is important for us to create business plans that are forward thinking. And that's the difference between mm. writing for Wikipedia versus writing for a business planning initiative. In, in Wikipedia, you're writing factual information. And either you know the facts or maybe you don't know the facts and somebody else might know the facts and they're writing and filling in the gaps. But in a business planning process, there's a factual information uh, that needs to be documented, but there's also the forward thinking information that uh, what, is, what is this project gonna look like in uh, three years? What is the market landscape and how is that going to change in three years? And what are our unique selling points, the USPs that we need to, to work at in order to, to great, create a great project? And that is even going to be a smaller percentage. So the way we kind of look at it is that we have readers, we have then writers, and then we're going to have admins that, to those writers, which are going to be community, community members. They're going to be administrating the whole wiki process and then the project review committee sits on top of those admins and even hones in the information further and adds in the visionary components that are necessary for the business plan that's when you start to get into confidentiality and the important stuff that, that you really don't want to get out of of the community and then the ad, then there's a uh, the the top layer which is the secret layer and that's a layer that we won't even divulge to the members because there might be some very important intellectual property that is so specific to that project that we need to keep it outside of the business document in order to protect the community just in case somebody is trying to uh, watch that document being created just to be able to take it out of the community and, and copy it over in Borneo. Right? I don't want to pick on Borneo, but I, I like to use uh, Borneo as an example. So apologies to Borneonians. Anyway, so, um, so my point is that we can have multiple tiers in terms of uh, contributors, and we believe that that's going to be an important aspect to the business planning process. Okay, I know from my perspective, every time we you know get involved in a community call, I'm always amazed at the the thinkers that we have, and I think that's really what you're talking about there is that visionary thinking where you know, someone can come with an idea and we have all these really technical geniuses. I mean, I've talked to some smart people. It's like, wow, you know, they really have a grasp on, you know, what's current in technology, especially blockchain and things like that. And so someone could bring an idea and then it's these visionary other people on the team that can say, well, five years down the road, you're going to be dealing with this. And six years down the road, you might be dealing with that. And, and so helping to, to think through that process. So I think that's, is, I've seen that already, and so I can imagine how valuable that will be to someone that's uh, in the business planning process. Okay, um, those are all the questions that I have um, received so far, and so are there any last words that you would love to? I specifically have some calls with some folks, which is what initiated um, this interview with you that I'm talking about. They already have their idea. A couple of them even already have their website. It's not fully active, but they know who they want to go after. What do you say to people like that? I would say, you know, talk to us, ask us questions. Uh, hopefully this video is informative uh, to, to that, uh, to their initiative and to see really if there's a fit, right? U ultimately it comes down to um, a, a fit from their entrepreneurial goals 
and what we're trying to achieve as an incubator for blockchain innovation. And it may not be a perfect fit here. It may be more kind of like just a couple fingers are crossing over, uh, but a fit nonetheless. And uh, maybe it requires reading some of our white papers. Uh, maybe it's just a matter of having some discussions with us on our Slack channels and we can share uh, the, the addresses uh, with, uh, with some potential entrepreneurs. But it's really about saying, look, do you have the resources that you need to build the business plan that you're looking for? Uh, and even if you do have the resources, do you have the right resources to, to really make your projects uh, great and, and really uh, expand on a, on a global scale? Uh, do you have the financing that you're looking for? Because we, we would basically be incubating the projects and financing them within the community as well. So there's a lot of questions, really. There's no simple, there's no silver bullet here in terms of helping out the entrepreneurs, but uh, everybody that's really joined the community has joined because they see uh, an opportunity to participate. They see a, an opportunity to learn about how to create business plans because we're gonna literally have a whole bunch of people that are gonna be business planning experts in, in a year's time as we start to kick cookie cutter this whole process. And uh, we have people joining because they see op uh, opportunities in terms of employment, uh, we then we have the classic uh, entrepreneurs that are interested in joining because they want to uh, invest and and, uh, and and contribute funds to projects and and become equity owners of those projects in the future. So there's a lot of different aspects uh, to why the Adele ecosystem is good for various different people that want to join and uh, and sometimes it's just a combination of everything I just mentioned. So it really depends. And but we're we're here to help. I know that you're, you, you've been great in, in terms of helping out on the forums, so that's been uh, great. And you know, we're always trying to answer questions very uh, diligently and quickly. So you know, we, we want to get a, a lot of members into, into the ecosystem. The goal, uh, I have a personal goal of 500 members. Uh, we have 128, so if we can, if we can uh, triple, quadruple that number, then we're at 500. And, that, and, and just keep growing from there. So we have a great start at 128, and uh, we just want to keep building the ecosystem uh, and, and as many projects as we, we can to make them all successful. Okay, wonderful. And the beautiful thing is the more projects that we have, then, then the success of the ADL coin just continues to grow in value. And I love that model. Absolutely, yeah, great. Okay, wonderful. Thanks for chatting with me, Gabriel. Appreciate your time. Thanks, okay. yes. See you next Here. time. Yeah.